Good day, folks. Hi, good morning or good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon here. I don't know whether it should be, we should say things as a time related to get a sense of where somebody is or be respectful that it could be somebody's middle of the night. So I've just switched to good day, I don't know. I haven't yeah. figured that out either yet. <laughs> Uh, I'll start with apologizing. I've got some kind of camera issue that I can't seem to enable my camera. So I am not hiding. I just can't seem to get it to come on. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Is it Furkat? Oh, yes, it's Furkat. Furkat. Well, thank you for coming. I, I saw with your postings that time is a, a challenge so hopefully that i think that's the first thing on our agenda actually um in fact if that is yeah, no problems yeah, thanks for response by the way no, no this has been a long-standing problem it's it's been a, a combination of who was willing to take the time to set it up and then of course trying to find uh, a common time yep sure uh, and for those that want to keep voting for now, Tuesday at nine to 10, which is now, uh, no, actually Tuesday, not Monday, Tuesday, nine to 10 is the current winning vote. So uh, keep voting and I'll, I'll paste it here as well. Um, we can do whenever. Yeah, I think want. someone requested um, the 10 to 11 Pacific time slot. So I'll add that as well if people want to update it. Oh yeah, did you, is that not on there? It will be in two minutes. <laughs> Fair enough. So folks can please uh, sign in. I'll put the link in the chat session for folks. Hey, does a question about the doodle. Does it show up in my time zone or is this a time specific time zone? I had the same question because I thought it was too coincidental. Uh, I believe it automatically, it must automatically convert. It shows at the top um, under the title, just below add to Slack, it says what time zone you're in. Cool, thank you. Well, there you go, that's, that's the confirming. Thank you, Brandon. All right, if you access it now, it should have the extra time as well. Okay. Why don't we give folks a moment to update that, um, and we'll uh, we'll come back to this one. While we'll, we'll kind of do a parallel voting thing. In fact, I'm just going to check my calendar so I can accurately because we've been deferring this for a while. It'd be nice to get this closed so folks can schedule things. Um, why do I not see my own name on here when I saw it? Is there something? That's interesting. How does this work, Marina? It should be at the same link. Can other people not see it? Because I can, I can. No, read, I see it. And it. I see the new time, but I don't see myself. And I, I'm positive that I put my name on this last time. So I'm not sure. I'm really confused. Do other people see their own name? Yeah, I see my own name. Yes. I don't see yours, so I wonder if you didn't get all the way to the update button at the bottom. That might be the case. I'm, I'm clicking myself as others click. We'll just we'll continue in a moment. Uh, 
Okay, at least I see my own name now. All right, cool. Okay, so um, people have filled in. This is great. Great to see so many attendees. Um, the so I'll, we'll come back to that in a little bit. Folks can just pop on that and. In fact, Marina, do you want to just monitor that and make a call for where the most votes are? Sure, yeah. I don't see Serge here. Uh, oh, there he is. Uh, if you and, and Serge, because he, he got the initial one set up, but I'll leave it to you guys to make a suggestion on that one. We'll come back to it. Uh, the, uh, there's a couple of things that um, were added. So one of the things um, that uh, came up was some of the, the number of repos. So I think it was Dan that brought that up. So I did spend some time cleaning it up last week. The main issue was which one, trying to maintain the PR history. So I was able to play a little bit of the rename, uh, leverage the rename capabilities. So there was less historical content in the notary project on the status reports. So I just copied that content into the requirements and then renamed requirement the notary project. Uh, the, the reason, so it, it's unfortunate that we hadn't planned it out as well at front. Basically, we realized that the first repo we created was called requirements. And then we had some clients for the prototypes that we created for NV2 and others. Um, and we never actually thought ahead, like, when we're done with this, which is the root repository we want people to look at, because requirements wouldn't be it. Uh, so that's why we kind of repositioned it to be notary, notary, the, the standard stuttering. We And I'm sorry, I shouldn't say stuttering as if it's a bad thing. Um, the standard repetitive name is usually the root project. Um, so that's where we wound up settling. And that would be kind of the, the span to all the other repos in there. Uh, there's, uh, as the issue that's um, the first one that says repos that's listed, in fact, let me just share my screen. I'll walk through it. Uh, hey, hey, Steve, sorry, I'm new here. I'm just curious, who who is we in this context? So I'm just trying to understand sort of the lay of the project here. When you, I, I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Is this uh, Kim? Yeah, this is Kim. You just keep okay. saying we, and I'm just curious who, who we is. We are the folks that have been working on Notary V2. So yourself and Justin, just... Brandon, Marina, um, Niaz. Um, okay. Milo, okay. there's been various people that depending on where they are in their time have been able to come and join. Got it, okay, thanks. And who do you represent? I, I'm at Google. Okay. Um, okay, so, uh, Definitions and terms, how did I get here? Sorry. Uh, this one, let me get back to the repos one. Interesting, okay, hold on a second. So the, I don't know if this, give me one second while I find, I think when it got moved, the repo names, the numbers got redone. Uh, here it is, Prune Notary Projects. Okay, so um, basically what, it was a good opportunity to kind of force myself to kind of go back and describe what we were doing with each one of these. So the Notary Project becomes the root um, requirements. I'm actually thinking we should merge, which I can't, actually I did merge. So this was the initial one. Uh, so what you, actually, let me go through what I did. So this was the thought process when the question came up, so I did merge notary project, sorry, requirements with notary projects. So now that is the root and it's got the history of what we've discussed there. Uh, NV2, this one is the binaries that we'll have. The thought was there's another one actually called notary, which would have the libraries. So the idea anybody that wants to use the notary libraries would have that project to be able to put stuff in and any binaries, whether it be the Docker extension or others um, we can put here. Website, I've left it, that's a standard thing that Chris put in as part of every uh, CF uh, project and I assume eventually we'll use that. The other repos that we've had have been focused on what are the upstream changes that we want to stage so that we can um, 
consolidate instead of it having it being off in the Oz private repo or Sheways or somebody's. Uh, we wanted a place where we can merge stuff in, we can build against, we can test against, and because we know we're iterating on it, we would make sure that it was in a stable thing before we did push it upstream and make a request. We wanted to have confidence that the changes actually, you know, were worthy of being uh, pushed upstream. Um, we probably got a little bit that we made more forks just to make sure they were there in case somebody need them and it did create more than we needed. So we did trim them back down. Right now we have Notary Project, NV2, um, as the two, there'll probably be a notary in there as well for the libraries. I'm looking uh, for the folks that are working on that to make some suggestions. And then the forks for the things that we're doing upstream will consolidate the two Docker generating Docker uh, NV2 into the one. And then we've been doing the demonstrations on distribution for how these, uh, the linking, the references to artifacts uh, can be done. Uh, and both in persistence and discovery to make sure that we can do the full round trip. Uh, that work has been done there. And the container D is the staging ground for that work that's happening. Um, and then there's the other one for OPA, which uh, I don't know if Daniel's going to make it today, but I'll talk briefly what he was talking about. So that's effectively where we're at now. Um, I don't know if others have any thoughts on the actual repos, but I also wanted to talk about uh, branching conversations as well. So I'll pause there for a moment. No feedback, nothing. Chat. There he is, chat. Yeah, no feedback other than just the thanks. I was one of the people that was saying we're getting a little too cluttered with these repos. So this, this is helpful. Cool. Thanks, Brandon. Okay, so the next question, if there's no more feedback, and um, again, uh, for those that join later, my, my camera's not uh, working today, so uh, the visual connection is helpful, but I uh, apologize for mine. The, uh, the next conversation is, how do we wanna handle the branching? Um, we definitely have prototypes that we're, we're not stating as a stated, you know, uh, it's a current state, as opposed to here's something to uh, build against. I think we're getting close in some places and other places. We're actually getting close, close in a couple of places. And we'll talk about that. So I was thinking, you know, did we want to create a, um, a release one branch uh, where, did I, where we can start? Uh, I'm not sure with this. I think there was something that Omar was had originally in there. Um, and my, let me go back to the NV2 one because I think that had some additional branches. Yeah, it was prototype one, prototype two, and the stuff that Marina has been working on. Um, I've seen different people do it different ways where main always re remains the, the most latest and current, even though it might not be, it's not that stable is not the right word, but it's not the, the current official release. And then there's a release that's the official release. So that's one idea. Um, we could put a, a V1, a, a, well, a V2 draft uh, branch, and that can be where uh, things, it, whether, probably the signature work is probably the closest thing that we're you know, at a point of stability. The, depending on what happens with the artifact manifest and the new stuff Justin's been working on, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment, that might be a stable thing. I'm curious, what people, how do people want to view things when they come in to see what's the current stable thinking and what versus what's an incubation and prototype? Yeah, I think that while we're in this prototype phase, it might make the most sense to just have a main branch that points to the different prototypes with a quick explanation of where each project is so that somebody going there can just see, you know, what am I interested in and then link to that. Oh, I see. So main becomes a markdown doc that's a pointer as opposed to there's no actual code in it per se. Not yeah, that would, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no that's, sorry, F finish your thought. Yeah, I think that, that would just make it so that, because especially while the different prototypes are, are going in different directions, people can figure out what those directions are, what's, you know, what they're interested in today. Fair, fair. I think the, I think the, the one related to tough is the one that we have to kind of, we want to work to consolidate that the most, because prototype one and two are, are building, a like, prototype two replaces one, but you're right, the tough stuff is, um, is a parallel. And I'm hoping that in prototype three, we reconcile that. 
uh, that's the stuff that I've seen with uh, with you and Justin and uh, Niaz and Shiwe talking. So that, that would be great. Uh, but I think I like the way you're saying that because it's it allows us to show the branching. Um, okay. Anybody else? Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I think the normal branching scheme that we're used to makes a lot more sense once you finally have one of these prototypes that you say is stable. So until we get to that point, I think I think that suggests makes most sense to me. Okay. Cool. Anybody else? Yeah, uh, maybe I'll just ask like, uh, did they get it right that uh, this branch is prototype one and two will eventually uh, get merged to the main branch? Is that correct? Sorry, I'm feeling a little Zoom challenge today. Usually I could see my screen where I can see people. There it is, okay, thank you, sorry. I think it's because my camera's not on it, hit it a little bit by default. Who was that talking? It's it's Fulcat, sorry. Oh, Fulcat, thank you. Sorry, um, yeah. ask your question again. Yeah, sorry, yeah, I was asking, um, are these prototype one and two branches will eventually uh, be merged with main branch? Is that what I understood or? Yeah, so what's, um, there's been there's been two parallel tracks that have been going on. Um, there's common work that we've been doing on things like around a signature and how to find linked objects in a registry so that we could sign because one of the things is we've said from the beginning that we did not want to change the digest or the tag of an artifact to sign it this way any deployment artifacts like a, a pod spec or a helm chart or some cloud provider specific deployment technology uh, they don't have to change the reference just because they're signing something so that forced us to deal with the idea that we could link um, signatures to an artifact, uh, a container image or an SBOM or something else. So that part, we were fairly, there's, we're working on different implementations of that and how to do that, but that one is kind of making a, a fairly straight progress, including things around the, the signature that we've got so, so far. The other part that we've been working to resolve is the time stamping and some of the stuff that the update framework brings in that we've been struggling on how to scale it to not just multiple private uh, public registries and software registries, but the number of private registries and how we do it in a, in a reasonable fashion. So we early earlier on, and I don't know, Marina, I don't know if you remember, it was like first quarter of last year or somewhere around there, it's been a while. We agreed that let's separate those conversations because we wanted to make sure that we can make progress on a core set of scenarios while we, uh, resolved some of how to handle some of those parts of the requirements for things like rollback. So there was a, a split to allow us to make progress on the, the tough implementations versus what we're doing is a more core signature signing verification that did not attempt to uh, solve rollback. Those, so that's how we wound up with these parallel efforts. The one and two are sequential, two replaces one, three would replace two. But where hope is tough will merge with three. We're basically using a prototype three to resolve the differences in a, uh, and how we solve those. And I would just add as another note that the um, the way I see the split, I feel like it's a little bit different than the way Steve understands it. I feel like it's figuring out the the prototypes one and two are figuring out kind of the interaction with the registries and the OCI image spec and kind of all the existing technologies today. Whereas then the, the tough part kind of figures out the key management and um, how you actually know which signatures you can trust and kind of that um, piece of the puzzle. I, let's, I, I think we're, I think we have, we have not done a good job of completing the key management. I think there's some key management. I think the question is the key management in prototype one and two, is that even scoped it enough? And that's the question where I kind of bring back the rollback. But, that is, there's some varied opinions on what we need to do around key management, and that's where we have like Marina, Justin, Niaz, Shiwei, uh, and the crypto experts kind of focusing on what are the, what is the requirements we want to serve? Is there an optional set of requirements? And that's where we're trying to converge them in three. Thanks. I really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, that's so, fair, Marina. Uh, so, yeah. on here. Can, can I ask uh, also uh, one thing? Uh, so, <clears throat> like this 
mainly the same thing that Furkat was asking. So are we planning to, uh, in some point, uh, merge these uh, prototypes into the main branch? And at least in many of the uh, open source uh, projects uh, that I've been working with, the, uh, the main branch is kind of a development branch. And then we have these uh, release branch, like uh, Steve was uh, mentioning earlier, that uh, maybe, maybe we also in in the long run we we wanted to have these releases but uh do you have any uh idea when could these prototypes could be merged into the main branch and and do you have any any kind of a schedule for that or or idea how far we are from from merging this into the main if we are willing to merge them yeah, I think that as soon as we kind of move away from this prototyping and into more of a final product, then we'll go, back, I think, a more normal development flow with the main branch um, and release branches makes a little bit more sense. But with the this, this prototypes with all the different scopes, I don't know that a, a single release makes sense yet. Um, we'll let Steve weigh in as well. Yeah, I agree. We might not be able to do any kind of a... Um release yet but uh, at least uh, it would be for example my perspective if, if i would like to contribute something in the code wise it would be kind of a uh, easier to uh, at least follow because I'm, I'm new with the project we are interested in in ericsson to uh, contribute in, into this and uh, but uh, as long as these prototypes are going like uh, different tracks it, it it's at least in the beginning, it feels like a bit uh, hard to to understand where are we going and and these type of things. But uh, just yeah, I agree, and I think that I think uh, um, if having the main branch be kind of more of a pointer to you know where where you should start as a as an incoming contributor, do, do you mm -hmm. think that would help you figure out you know where to where to go if you if you kind of had a a mapping of what the branches were doing. And I think the key point here is to realize that the prototypes are very much a proof of concept. They're not really designed to be the future development necessarily. They're just verifying that our ideas are feasible and that there are no issues with that. So I don't think there's going to be a point where we're going to merge in the prototype in the main. I think we're going to hit a point where we say, yes, the prototype looks like it's feasible. And now let's start designing the final solution. Oh, okay. Jen, I appreciate that when you're, uh, it's a good point. I just brought up on my screen about add the repo descriptions, try to make it more clear. Um, prototype one is, is basically, prototype one is only good if you want to demo what's functional today. And when I say functional, it's in a prototype phase. There's no expectation somebody would run it in a production environment. It was strictly a matter of, can we get a, a core experience working by hacking something together? And we felt good enough that we proceeded with prototype two to do the, the linking proposals. Um, the, in parallel, we've been working to resolve what Marina's re, re talking about is how, what is the scope of key management? And that's why we weren't ready to make a statement around what Notary2 actually is at this point, um, to be respectful of folks that are working on various approaches. So the tough proposal is just, it was, I, I don't remember why we named it one versus the other. It's just the way we named it, um, my hope is, I would hope, because two was for hardening some of the things that we knew about. Um, in three, I, I think the reasonable thing is two will be wrapping up in the next week or two. I think we're pretty close if it's not this week. The, as we start three, we, my hope would be that in the next couple of weeks, we should be able to have um, a consolidated effort that we're focused on. And I think the question is, does main become the active thing and there is no release yet? And then when we have a release, there is you know, release one and then main continues as the post one development. Is that what folks would like to see? Obviously after we get to a point where we feel like we've got a, a, a common thing we're working on. Oh, I'm at least plus one for, for the having the main as a development branch and and when when we hit the certain certain points that we are able to do the releases, we do the releases from the current uh, mains uh, and and keep the main still as a develop uh, for the development. So 
So you, you snap from main and then that becomes the release. And if you have to do servicing on that release, you do it there. And the main is always the, the forward path. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, I don't think we'll get to that point until prototype three at the earliest. Yeah, agreed. And uh, I'm, I'm totally fine with that one, but uh, I just wanted to, you know, just to discuss uh, how, how we see the future in this is this project and and it's totally fine that we we need to kind of wait for to something to be mature enough to be able to be as a, a development branch so i'm i'm totally okay with that i think part of what you're seeing uh, jen is a recognition that we kind of rushed uh notary v1 and didn't get it complete and uh to account for all the various of evolutions of what would, I wasn't part of Notary V1 at the time, so I, I don't want to speak to it for Justin and others that were working on it at the time. The, but I think we're taking a more balanced approach or not balanced, but more pervasive approach on what exactly it means to span public uh, sec, uh, software registries, private registries and private registries in air gap environments, which we recognize as the common not, not you know, the oil platforms and submarine kind of scenarios. It's pretty much every one of our larger customers has said they want a private network in the public cloud. So how do we support um, signatures that move? And um, I, I, I'm trying to be careful not to call it key verification anymore, but whatever an expiry of something means, um, we want to make sure that is uh, just as secure, if not more secure in air gap environments, because people go into air gap environments because they want higher security. So we can't say it's a less of a solution in an air gap environment than it is if it's got public connectivity. So I think the we're taking a more balanced, a more um, disciplined, timely approach to it to make sure that yes, it might ship a little bit later than what we would like, but when it ships, it will at least work um, and it won't be too short-sighted. So I, I think and we're- for for those joining, I just want to throw a little context. A lot of the stuff that we're working on is based off of things like the artifacts project from OCI that is still in their design phase. And uh, so there's a lot of the stuff that we're working on trying to create that are built off of things that are still being built. And so there's, there's going to be some effort here that's still under design. Okay, if you look, this was kind of the picture that tries to a capture like we're not trying to notary v1 was like the sidecar thing that you had to run and we run it on acr we, we've gotten feedback from just implementing it from our customers and it's been extremely problematic so we're basically trying to say what is the right holistic solution to get it right so that's just the, the number of projects and it, it, it's coming together pretty well like I, I think we're generally happy with where it is i think we just all wish it was done already <laughs> Does it make sense, Jim? Yes, it makes a lot of sense, yeah. Thanks. I've also been working this past week as far as repos uh, go is to um, make sure that I can start making it clear where people can contribute. So there is, uh, the issues are just trying to consolidate the re issues here, uh, whether it be tag signing for stuff that Brandon was pushing uh, for or even a container D plugin, and we'll talk about this in a moment and things all the way back to notary, uh, sorry, the repos and everything. So all of these things we tried to tag um, and there's the ones that are in, I, I've also started to move things to some discussions. I try to make some proposals on that is that uh, issues are good for discussing things and there's a history to it and so forth, but the goal is to close an issue. And what happened is we had some things in requirements that uh, was around, in fact, I don't even see it here now, um, around proposals and designs. And it was, it was even titled the design discussion. And you can't close an issue. Like we don't wanna close that. We wanna keep that around for some period of time. So I have enabled discussions and we're trying to keep the pieces here and we've got a couple of them here, including, you know, the, this was posted, so I moved that one here. Unfortunately, I can't move a PR, um, but you can move an issue to a discussion. Oh, that's what it was. The design discussion was here, initial design options. So I pinged Sam if he wants to move that over there. Um, but the point is, is that if you look for, and we should probably start doing this, is putting, you know, looking for work, 
on some of these items. And um, that's what happened on the gatekeeper one is somebody was, you know, Dan was looking to help out. He said, hey, can I help here? So I think, Jen, either if you want to just let us know if there's an interest in an area that you'd like to help with, there's an area you want to contribute to, we can make sure that we're giving you guys what you need to um, contribute in, in whatever fashion makes sense to you. Yeah, me and Furgat, we are we are working from the same team, and and yeah, we we can discuss uh, this internally and and let you know we have a couple of things that we really want to work on. Uh, but uh, once again, I I need to uh, be more uh, aware of the actual project and 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 to see how can I how can I uh, contribute or, or how we can contribute into here into notary. Fair enough. Sounds great. So thanks, thanks a lot, guys. No, thank you. All right. Uh, any other discussions on repos and branching and releases? I think the the summary is we will uh, have the two prototypes. We get. A, I will. I will flag prototype one as being done as the reference. At this point two is the you know the next evolution of that, and tough is the other one. So there's basically two parallels at this point. We'll get that added to the, the root readme. Um, and that prototype three is shaping to be the consolidation of a focused effort that we would then move into main. So basically what I'm actually hearing is whether prototype, there should be a prototype three branch or does prototype three branch just become main? Actually, if, if we can get things consolidated on the efforts in, uh, in quote three, and there's not two parallel efforts, then let's just put that in main is what I'm really hearing. Okay. Um, and releases, we hope to have one soon. Uh, I'll go there. I think prototype one is really the, the best can be done is considered a release because it lets you get a good demo of the experience that we've been targeting. Um, and so anyway, we'll stop there. Uh, Daniel, did he make the call? He said he had a conflict, so I wasn't sure if he was going to start late or not. I'm just trying to get Zoom to show right. Okay, don't see him here. So uh, Daniel's from uh, a company called NT Data. They did some NTT data. Sorry. Uh, and they did some work around Notary V1 and OPA validations. So he had asked if you know they could pick up that work item. Um, so it was a great conversation. We talked about it last week. Uh, I think it was last week. And um, so I opened the issue. I realized we didn't even have an issue for it. Uh, and some of the folks from Harbor were also asking around doing some OPA validations around it. So they're all welcome. Uh, to join. So I put that one there and I put, uh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my screen. Let me go and put this over here. So I did try to capture uh, the generalization. There's been conversations around what does it mean to have the, the registry as the C name. So I try to put that, I try to capture that information here as well. Uh, that basically the first thing is, is the key valid? Um, how we get the key. Again, we've not really focused heavily on key management in prototype two. It's really kind of scoped out. Uh, the assumption is that there is a way to get uh, a private key for building and a public key for uh, validating. And we defer it to the, however you do that in your cloud today. And we will work on the expiration, cancellation, revocation scenarios. We'll come to some better guidance on that in three. Um, so that's, you basically just validate as the one of more of the keys that's assigned to, in this case, it says OPA, so it is an image. Is it valid? And not valid, is, well, is, the, is there a signature that matches um, on the image to uh, a key that's on the node gatekeeper, the gatekeeper node? And if so, let the uh, deployment proceed. There's a second one that picks up on this idea that each company can uh, re-sign the content for their environment. So in this case, it's software deployed, uh, built by Wabbit Networks. It goes to Docker Hub. There's now two signatures on it. In the ingress into Acme Rockets, the one or either, the uh, signatures is validated to determine whether it should even come into this air-gapped environment of Acme Rockets. And as part of that ingress, they put a third signature on it. 
So the idea is that um, here on the ingestion, you can one, make sure that the key is valid for that, that company, whether it be Wabbit or Docker Hub, and two, the, the C name that's on the cert that um, is the image pulled from that registry. That is a second optional verification. Once that's done here, once it becomes signed by Acme in here, in the production environment, they could say, well, am I, is it the Acme rocket signature? And is it pulled from the registry that's declared in that cert within this environment? So that's the conversation point there. So right here, I think this is what Marina and I were kind of stuck on last week. Um, the, I think it's more like a design question or challenge, but I think the putting the, putting that field in the common name of the cert is kind of the wrong place for it rather than in the signature payload itself. Um, especially in this example here where the common name is just a self-signed certificate. It's basically just plain text that sits next to that key. There's no security guarantees for that common name field at all. It's just like, a, it's equivalent to any string you find sitting next to the key. Well, somebody makes a determination whether the key is valid. The fact that it's self-signed is because we're trying to not have any uh, affinity to any particular cloud provider or any implementation. The idea is that they would be able to use, you know, full X509 uh, completed certs. So this is just a way to get people to, to be able to stand it up and run themselves. Yeah, I think that there is, if, if it's only signed by the person who creates that signature, I don't think you really get much of a guarantee that that's actually where it came from. Um, Cause I don't understand the threat model where that would be different. Um, well, if you're issuing, if a company is issuing X509 certs, that's the premise. So the stuff in the cert is supposed to guarantee the cert itself, not the other content generally. I it's think saying this maybe is it's like a, a precision thing, but we like, in, for num maybe in number two, you should say cert instead of key. We kind of use them interchangeably throughout this, which might make it a little oh, more Oh, that's confusing. fair. That's fair. That's probably, that is, um, you're right. I have used that interchangeably. In fact, let's just change that right here. That's easy enough. All right, where'd the formatting just go? Did I do that in some other place here as well? I'm not sure. We'd have to go through and see which one we actually meant for each. Sign it for the purpose of this project, we can build the image and sign it with a key or cert. I mean, I can change this to cert as well here. Uh, it should be signed with the key, I believe. And the next one, C name of the X509 cert. Okay, so this is where I'm getting dyslexic of C's, the certs and keys. Yes, yeah, do you want to speak to the, the questions on that? Because I, I forgot that you were here. Uh, sure. Um, I think uh, uh, the C name, as long as it's included in the certificate, the certificate itself is also signed, so that can be validated. Um, as long as it's not referring to a C name being pulled out and attached to the signature separately, I think that should answer the question that there was previously. But if there's any other questions, I can answer that too. Does that make sense to you, Marina? I think. I think I'm still not getting the threat model that putting the common name in the certificate addresses. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it, it could be signed by the key. I, I don't understand the use case for it because um, I think I would, I would need a better, and maybe, maybe this is, I think that's something we're missing more in general is what is our threat model and um, what attacker capabilities are we, do, are we assuming? Because if we're assuming, um, yeah, the attacker is ever going to compromise a key or ever going to compromise a server, then I don't know that this is going to give you any additional information. Um, I don't think we're proposing C name validation at any point. Um, I think the, um, the, the, the way we described the validation to happen is that there's a root key that you're trusting and essentially based on that root, you can chain downwards uh, and determine if like the signing key or the hierarchy of keys that are being used to sign are valid. Um, the C name comes in as an interesting concept for additional validation. 
um, if you have a root that you trust, let's say, let's, for example, a trusted CA, um, then you could potentially look at certain fields in that C name. And I think we want to get more precise as we go forward. Um, you can trust, for example, organizations, if it's an organizationally validated X509 certificate, uh, there are other, other fields in the certificate that have no validation in them. So uh, we, I wouldn't generally recommend validating on those. But typically for an X509 certificate, the fields in the certificate would also be signed with the key itself. Um, so as long as you have the route to validate and you have the signature or the certificate chain, uh, you'd be able to validate certain fields in the certificate as well as long as they're embedded in the signature. Yeah, for me, I, I look at what's the workflow, especially particularly for the clients that are doing the verification of this, of how they would do the verification. I feel like the client side should be saying, I'm going to pull this image and make sure it is signed by someone trusted by this authority. And so there will be some kind of chain of trust. And so we wouldn't even need to be looking at things like the C name in that case. Yeah, I think that's my confusion too. All right, we've said from the beginning, this was around doing some incubations and experimenting. When Chiwei put this together, the C name associated with the registry became an interesting uh, piece. We hear from customers pretty regularly. They want to lock down their deployments to only pull from certain registries. Um, so it became an interesting idea to experiment with. Whether it survives or not, it's up for you know the group to decide. Um, I wonder if you rephrase the solution to those people if they would like what we're coming up with. Um, if they said they want to lock it down to only come from a certain registry, would they be comfortable if it only came from a certain signer? And then the signer could only push to a certain things. registry. Yeah, it, it was one of those additive things because you could also say if it only should come from a certain registry, you can lock that out for a network rule. Um, but you know, that's like saying, well, if I'm in a network, if I'm in a VNet, I don't need authentication. Well, hold on. <laughs> you know, multiple lines of defense are always a good thing. But so, I think that if we associate certain keys with certain registries, you can get the same properties. Or if your roots of trust are associated with you know, who you actually trust to sign these images. Or, or potentially even more granular. The person doing signing on the registry might only sign a certain slice of that, and that's the only stuff you trust. And so you no longer worry about who might have push access to that registry at that point. But I think it does definitely comes down to our key management conversation. I mean, it's, there's, clearly there's discussions here. I was able to merge in some of the uh, content from the, the PRs that you know kind of had good approvals on them. The content, the key management ones, uh, basically I'm looking for you and Diaz and Justin and, and uh, Marina to, uh, I guess, Shiwei, you know, for you guys to kind of consolidate down on what you want to do there. Um, and we can decide what we want to do with it. At this point, there's nothing tied to validating the C name. There's nothing limiting that. There, uh, in fact, I have to check with the current NV2 client uh, does and how it optionally verifies that or not actually. Um, so okay, so maybe we can use this that as like a, a potential thought to come back to as we nail down things like our threat model and our workflow, because it feels like right now we don't really know what those are. And so it's hard to decide if this is a feature we're going to want. Yep, fair enough. Thus, the prototype label. <laughs> I mean, it, it, this goes back to, you know, Jan's kind of question, like, what exactly are we making statements on yet? We're not yet. Like we're we're trying to make sure that we account for the various scenarios that we're trying to make sure that we have confidence that we are shipping something that has the right bar. It'll never be the security answer because you know this is why fire safes never claim that they are fire safe. They rate it on number of hours. Every security issue can be mitigated. It's just a matter of time and effort. So the question is, did we put enough effort to make it secured that it's still usable? Because we have to, if it's not usable, people won't use it, and then it's not secure. So, um, just to kind of be repetitive of that balance that we're constantly shooting for, um, and it's, we haven't made that determination yet. So, all right. So, but we do. I think we do have enough to start doing the open. Like, there's there's probably some areas that we know we don't know. There's areas that we do know, but we haven't actually done an end to end with OPA. So, um, I'm hoping Dan um, Daniel. Uh, from NT, NTT data, uh, and if the Harbor folks are, I think this is the first time we've actually had enough in place for people to start doing that validation. 
Um, they can do it on uh, prototype one. I'm hoping we'll have prototype two working to a point and assume that we'll be able to do it there. Um, and then we'll we'll learn what we don't know. That's kind of the main thing. So let's keep on uncovering, peeling the onion, figuring out what are the things that we haven't accounted for yet. Uh, and the same thing with the container D work. Uh, I'd love to see some uh, validations there because we don't want to be tied to just Kubernetes. So any uh, Kubernetes host, but any container host, if you will. So that covers the OPA validation. Um, since we're already on signature format, we can jump ahead and, and cover that because uh, basically the C name was part of that conversation. So I'll move this one up here. Yeah, it's all kind of Is there of the anything same. else that we want to discuss here? Um, yeah, I guess just the general timeline and which prototype phase we want to start firming this one up in. Um, there's a bunch of feedback from other people here. Um, is this the one we're going with for prototype three? I think it's called out in the demo or script. It's, it's um, what we use for prototype one and two. We, other than questions around, actually this isn't, this is the, the feedback on it. So sorry, let me go back to the actual signature. Um, you know, there's this question of what does the C name do? Um, actually, I'm sorry, I'm getting the two confused. So where do we have the, do I, oh yeah, here it is. Um, in fact, I have to double check because I think something changed in the Go libraries. We had to change how this was done also. But the, you know, there's this part of it, you know, what is the level of, you know, support we want to give for setting a C name to a registry? And then the actual format would look here. And then, of course, it gets encoded. Um, so at this point, this is our working example. We don't have anything new to change to yet, but oh. I would expect some of the uh, prototype three would. Yeah, I think that we there have been um, a couple of concerns up and down about the the X five hundred nine format, and I don't have like a particular opinion one way or another. But I don't think we should pick it just because we happen to pick it for the first prototype. You know, I think we should have like a discussion where we look at other options and see what the signature format that's going to make the most sense is. Agreed. It's we don't have another proposal yet, and it's been working for what we had. So I think as we can get something more, we will. Um, but Niaz, I, I basically I'm looking for you guys, you and Marina. Yeah, I think the there's two aspects to the signature, right? Um, the um, the key information and the cert information, like that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is what's actually being signed. So even if we can agree on that part, I think um, that's some progress. So um, I don't necessarily think we should block on this on on, on one aspect of it. Yeah, because I think we're going to want some other type of signed metadata, no matter what, like the um, like the size of the image and other stuff. And so a lot of the information that's currently in the X509 certificate, like the C name, for example, if that's a field that we really need, we can just include that in whatever format we're using for, for that piece. I, I mean, I think the thing, the, the interesting thing for me, the C name is it's saying that the signature is or the cert is associated with the registry. So it's not that some image wasn't signed to a registry because we're, we're trying to be very explicit that content should not be tied to a registry. Like it's a very explicit decision that content can move. It's just it, what registry it currently is in is irrelevant. The question is, is the seal on it still intact? And the analogy I've been trying to use lately is if I ship up a thing from from here in Seattle to someplace in another country far away, I'm trying to it's going to, I'll, I'll say for a cut, but I think you're in Germany, right? Part of Ericsson? Uh, well, we are in Finland. Finland. Okay, sorry. So Finland, still far away. So if I'm shipping something to Finland, I'm going to put put something in a box, and I might put a seal on that box. You know, it's the, the, the thing that you sometimes see that the seal is broken. You know consider invalid. So as it leaves my house and whether it goes to UPS or FedEx and then it goes to some international carrier, then it goes to a local deliverer um, and gets delivered to FERCAT, he can look at it and say, look, this thing was shipped from here to here. It went into a registry, it went across registries and it came out of a registry and it's still intact. That's what I've been trying to, I think we're trying to say is the scope of what we're trying to do here. Um, so yeah, what sorry. registry it's currently in should be relevant. I would, yeah, and that's why I think that the C name actually is an exact counter to that. I feel like you just made an argument against including 
any information about where it first was. But I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think we, we need to have more discussion about this, but. Yeah, the question I'll put back to Steve is, does the C name actually provide what you were just asking for? Because let's say I just spin up my own little local harbor instance, my lo local lab. Mm -hmm. I can put a C name on there and say whatever I want to say in there. Sure. And then give that image to someone else. And so the question isn't, what's the C name? It's who really signed this? And do I trust the person who signed it? Can I look at their, uh, you know, their chain of trust as someone that goes back to someone that I trust? So let's say you, you, you signed it, whether it's, you know, Brandon Inc. or Brandon Mitchell, right? It was just the, either yeah. way. So you, you but no, put the, I... put the C name in there and say that it's Dr. Hub. Uh, oh, that's fair. Cause I was actually thinking about exactly that. There's uh, the distributor, the manufacturing distributor model of, of content. So, cause you might want to sign it for both. You might want to sign two for instance, but the idea is that if I get your public key and I trust Brandon to come in from, to, from content from Brandon and I'm using that key to trust you. I think the question is, is there something valuable that regardless of where I might've currently gotten the, the artifact from, if I got it from Docker Hub or if I got it from other, some other registry, that I, I have the option to going back to the registry that's specified in that C name to go find that content. So I, I could basically say, look, that's fine that I got it from here. For some reason, I'm a little distrustful and I can technically connect to back to whatever registry Brandon specified and I can go pull that content directly. I think that's part of. Um, I feel like the C name might be the wrong solution to the problem you're trying to solve there. It might be better to put some kind of reference or whatever within the signature, just kind of like what you have on the screen there and have that as a source you can go back to and that's just part of the thing you sign. And that might be the case. Yeah, I think I, think I agree that that would be a better way to go about it. Because I guess in my mind, if you really want to trust the registry, then the registry operator just implements their own signature, right? So like the, whether it be Hub or Acme, they implement their own secondary check. Yeah, they, they tack on their own signature. That's what you, um, that's what you care about if you want to say, I only want from this specific registry, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Cool. Anything else on that one? Okay. Um, moving back to the agenda, the other one was the uh, the OCI artifact manifest that we've been using. So basically, we incubated in prototype one, and then we kind of formalized in prototype two. Um, and this kind of goes. I don't even know where to look for it here, um, in a sense for here, because I got, all right. Uh, so in the artifact manifest proposal here, let's just bring it up here. And this was the trim down version from 27 that had the, the weak references, uh, because basically that was considered not, uh, not good enough. Um, it wasn't scoped enough. So what we needed for the artifact stuff was actually, let me go up here. Uh, so work, let's see. Uh, now let me go back to the overview. The overview makes more sense here. So the preference is that, you know, the, the, the concept is that there's an individual objects that go into a registry, the network monitor image. It's got a standard OCI image layout. Then I can individually push signatures, which is you know part of the uh, uh, artifacts and aura stuff. You can just basically push in another artifact. But the idea is there, there is no linking in a registry. There's no way to know it without hacking into you know tags or otherwise to say that these things are somehow associated with each other. The premise here is that we wanted to be able to um, get the uh, things linked so that, and it done in a generic way, so that uh, it would work for things that are signed or things like an SBOM. If I want to associate an SBOM with an artifact, so here what I've got is the network monitor image. It's got its layers, notice the downward direction. 
And then there's a signature and it also has, and, and technically the signature does not have a config. So I've updated that in the examples. I need to update the pictures. But the idea that an SBOM, and we're not stating which SBOM it is, but there's no commitment to one or the other, is just saying there is a document that can be put in a registry that declares the, the whatever the fancy words we want to put around SBOM from lineage to others um, and how it was compiled and so forth. The idea is that you can put this SBOM into the registry and put, put a pointer back to the manifest that basically says this is what makes up this thing. Because things that are in a registry are represented as uh, what the manifest documents that describes the thing, and the blobs are just the content of the thing. So the idea is that I can either have a signature directly, I could put a, an SBOM that's a link, and then I could put uh, a signature that it's a link to an SBOM, which is linked to the image. The, um, the evolution here is kind of got a long history to it, just on what we felt we were able to, well, not felt, what we were told we could make changes to back a couple of years ago when we did this approach. The premise, though, is that this would have a more generically useful capability. Um, so that was where we kind of left it on this. And that's what prototype two is hardening to make sure that the APIs and the persistence scale so that we make sure garbage collection um, would scale to documents lifting to other documents. After that, um, Justin uh, has been noodling on a larger problem, Justin Cormack, for not just what we've been trying to do here with the artifacts work, but there's been another thread of uh, changes we've been trying to get done that supports generic compression formats on images. And it was the one thought process is it should be so generic that any artifact can generate gen benefit from different compression formats, kind of um, without them having to do anything. That was more problematic. Um, we kind of left it with leaving it to each artifact to decide it, how they would handle compression formats or changes to their artifact type. The reality is there was no clean way to do that even on the image spec, and there was a several months of various efforts on trying to resolve that with StarGZ and some others. Um, Justin kind of went back and said, look, can we reboot this in a standard way that allows us to um, do it generically? So not only can we get reference manifests, uh, but can we solve the versioning uh, for artifacts in general, whether it be image or signature or SBOMs or NIDUS or anything that somebody comes up with. Because right now we have two manifests in the registry for image, which we've hijacked and used the image manifest for other things by determining the config media type. The, and then there's this image index, which also has challenges. The question is, can we make one more change so instead of the OCI artifact manifest, can we use this other manifest, which would replace the OCI artifact manifest proposal, by the way. And this one would give us that ability. Um, so I think it's towards the bottom that he has. It. And this got replaced with uh, a PR uh, recently, so we can actually do more specific feedback. Um, we believe, at least at this point, it needs more some qualifications on it, but we believe this actually solves what we're trying, what we need from Notary v2, and the larger problems that we've had with registry persistence. So, why does it matter to Notary? We're trying to not create so much confusion on how things get put in a registry. The idea is that this would be a standard that all registries can consistently implement, so that content can move across all registries, just like images can today. Um, and we wanna, if we have one more change that we have to implement in registries that would solve not just the signing solutions, but the um, versioning of the image spec and compression and the other problems that we've been struggling with for a couple of years now, then that seems like a good thing to do. So that's kind of where we're at at this point. Uh, Justin did kind of come up last minute and says, by the way, I've got this thing. Um, we'll be reviewing it more I guess today's Monday, this week. Um, I'm hoping there's been more feedback on it and Justin has more time to clarify that. Uh, the thought is that we'll take what we learned in prototype two to validating the linkages and uh, just apply it to this design. Um, if we can't get more firm in this, we'll probably continue with the artifact manifest because it's a solid thing that we know we can chip. 
it's got the capabilities we need. Uh, but my hope is that this will solidify and we can uh, transition to this one. So that's kind of the sausage factory at that level. Um, having, having a signature, having key revocation, we've kind of proven is unless there's a way to associate in registries that in a way that uh, is generically useful and scales, and it scales not just from uh, APIs, but from general usage, then we've kind of proven that that has not worked out well. Um, so my hope is that we can, uh, we're not killing birds with stones anymore. We're squashing bugs with one commit was the latest suggestion. So we're hoping that this one change will help us solve a bunch of the other uh, problems that we've been focused on. So watching some of the stuff of them on the artifact work there, it looks like there are three different things going on. One is kind of the main artifact proposal a lot of us have been looking at. We have this one coming out from Justin. I feel like I, there was another one out there that was looking at how he could possibly extend a scriptor and use it for some other things, extending some of the fields. Yeah, Steve, so here. Dan and John, you guys are both here. They have a proposal on uh, adding references on the descriptor. So that conversation is pursuing um, yeah. as well. From, from your impression of what's been going on in OCI, is it going to be uh, just pick one or is it going to be maybe a progression where we take the easy one now and get to the harder one later? I, you know, it's hard to say with, there's obviously a lot of opinions and, and passion on this one. So I want to be careful not to make any, you know, crystal ball guess, especially as we've been pursuing one of them. So that it comes across as a little tainted maybe. Uh, I think the question is, the thing for me on this one is to implement garbage collection on registries, which has been one of the biggest challenges in a registry. I really don't want to do it in multiple ways, owning one, one product. Um, you know, so others can make choices for what they want to do, obviously. So that's, that's to me, my big concern is I don't want to have to have multiple ways to do it. Yeah. Um, if we, and I think that there's a timeliness to it also. Look, if we can't, if this thing's going to take three more years to do it this way, then of course we got to find a shorter term way. I don't think it will. Um, I think we need to make a choice and figure out which one we could proceed with. And I'm hoping, I would personally hope we don't have multiple ways to do it. Because I think it just yeah. becomes confusion to the to the marketplace. I think that's the point of having a standard and a spec. Um, the question is which one serves the needs and which one can we get done. So I think that'll play its way out. Yep. And with that, so, we're at time. All right. The the other one for short live and long live, uh, Dan. That that's one. It's progressing. Um, I don't know what we would talk about today per se. Um, that's part of the prototype three conversations. Let's get down here anymore. So, yeah, I think maybe we can spend next week figuring out um, what that prototype three will look like. Because I think that we're at a point where we can put all these pieces together and really get a more cohesive thing. But we should spend some time working that out. Totally agree. Totally agree. I think the idea was, can we get something out on what we know while we iterate on what we don't know? That's not, I think, that is what the prototype two was about. Let's formalize what we know and uh, give room for incubating on top of that. All right. So with that, I'll give folks back their day and we will continue. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.